Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, good night. These two over here are two of the most famous cartoon actors, voice actors, you should know. One over here with the googly eyes. That's Richard Stephen Hortwitz. Hopefully I say the names correctly. And he is Invader Zim from Invader Zim. And this man over here, Roserick Ricky Simmons, is Gurr from Invader Zim. And over the weekend, I was at GalaxyCon. Three-day, you know, hodgepodge of uh, all sorts of things, pop culture. These two men were here. And if you come here, you come to enjoy a panel that these two sirs did. I filmed the best I could. This is what I got. So come in and enjoy. Captain K, your moderator. It needs to be even more exciting because we have two legends of our lifetimes, voices that have made their way into our minds and casual conversations for years now. It is my utmost pleasure to introduce to you these two wonderful artists. Please put your hands together first for Richard Horvitz! Yeah! And interesting questions for me. Just kidding. I have a few questions. This will be a, an audience Q&A panel, but we're going to get a mic set up somewhere over there shortly. And now we are going to find different seating positions, because this is officially an Invader's Zim panel. Well, we do voiceover. You don't need to see us. <laughs> do we like that? What are you saying? I am ugly. Richard doesn't work in a, a sound booth anymore, he works in a toll booth. Yes! <laughs> Give me your coins! <laughs> Give me your fast pass! What is that? What's that glowing thing over there? What is that? I'm a robot. Alright. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> I was worried. Just a robot, don't worry. Had a bad dream the other day. Oh no! I was a UPS man trying to bring a package to a deer that lived in the cave, and then I got stuck in it. <laughs> I got stuck in the deer or in the cave? <laughs> I got stuck in the cave, yes. <laughs> Sometimes the answer is both. Yes. Wonderful. Well, we are here for so many things. You guys have been, like I said earlier, just voices that stick with us. So many Sorry. Voices. We'll spend the next hour earning that apology. And, uh, but no, in all truth, the first question I like to ask is kind of the boilerplate question, but I do think it's of interest to all of us here. How did you come to the world of Invader Zim? What was that process like? Well, my parents gave birth to me. Right, we came through the birth canal first and foremost, right. and then we were Zim and Gur. <laughs> right. <laughs> Chapter one. Chapter one. Chapter one. I am born. <laughs> How was that for you? 
question. Question. What is your question, Carl? Well, so, was, it, was it a question or a statement? I thought it was a statement. So, well, the question is, how did you become involved with Invader Zim? Oh, we auditioned. Great. <laughs> Fantastic. Good answer. Well, well, it was a stormy night, and it was dark. Oh. And it was dark and stormy. In Burbank? In Burbank. Oh. <laughs> okay. uh, for me, uh, Ricky had been on the show and done the pilot. I didn't do the pilot originally. I was doing um, uh, Angry Beavers at the time. And, yeah! Uh, Spooky Beaver. Um, and um, Jonan had been a fan of mine from Power Rangers, believe it or not. Um, and, uh, and he uh, wanted me to come and audition, and I thought that I was uh, right, more right for the character of Dib. In fact, I thought I was auditioning for Dib, because I could go th like this. <laughs> Not this time, Zim! Um, but, but uh, no, he wanted me to audition for Zim. Mm. Uh, when, when, when were you, 16? I was uh, 12. That made you a minor character. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Awesome. Well, we're going to start getting ready for audience questions because my favorite moderators always talk the least and we get audience questions going first. We're going to set up a microphone right over there, so we're going to start lining up in that aisle way. Uh, that's going to be how Don't this Don't rush works. all at once! This is, this is Minnesota rushing. You know, it's just yes. very polite rushing. Yes. I haven't heard a single old sorry, so they're really fierce right now. Yes. yes. There had, it is. I had pork chops last night. Boy, do I like pork chops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're good. He liquefied them. I did. Great, so in other words, you're enjoying Minneapolis so far. Yeah. Great. It's very cold. It's yes. very cold. My pants are too thin for here. Good. <laughs> I didn't pack the right pants. All right. Good eating. These are these trousers are mostly spandex. I shouldn't have shouldn't have worn like them. Spider Man. How is Spider Man even alive? They are spandex because you go you do that Olivia Newton John scene from right. Greece. I, I got chills. Why do yoga? They'll know to be lacking. Just just you know anytime you're not wa watching me in the booth, I got my leg like. Just detached, and, you know. I'm stretching it out over the table. Hi. Hi. Great. I'm gonna make a quick rest. If you can take a knee in line, do so, so we don't lose this whole wing of visibility. Thank you so much. No, you're fine. You're, you, you have, have a question to ask. All right. Here's our first audience question. Um, okay. So this question is for Mr. Horvitz. Um, Please call me Sir, Mr. Horvitz. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sir, Mr. Horvitz. <laughs> In the first episode of Invader Zim, when Zim was referring to his invader blood, he said yes. that it was like giant radioactive rubber pants marching right. through his blood. And I remember seeing in an interview somewhere that you had like sort of messed up that line, but Jonan liked it, so he kept it. Were there That is true, Stephanie. That was the thing. I was in the in the booth and the original line was uh, invader's blood marches through my veins like giant radioactive rubber ants. And I accidentally said rubber pants. And Jonan said Yes, I used to always go, I am GER! <laughs> and Joe said, okay, let's do that too. <laughs> I would just go home. Yeah. Just home. Uh, not that I can recall offhand. Um, anything like that that you can remember where we just, where we, did we said something wrong and they kept it? Oh, well, one of my favorite stories is that there's a, I think it was from Mortos del Soul Stealer about we couldn't say the underworld, right? Couldn't say the underworld. Couldn't, couldn't say, say the word no. underworld. What did you say instead? We said, you are from the place below the overworld. Yeah. <laughs> and I liked Ultra PV. PV. I, I, like 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 I feel like we could say more stuff in the movie than we mm. could in the series. Yeah, I think they, well, we were ahead of our time. And yeah. they just didn't. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, we were, like, in... What, around uh, last week? We were in uh, 2001. Yes, when, when, when we recorded it, 2001, we said we were ahead of our time. So like what? 2000, not two. Like a couple hours? Yeah, a couple hours. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so Thank you so much for the great question. Thank you. All right, yeah, we can clap for the questions. It's a good question. All right, next question. Um, this is for both of you. Um, what do you think is the best song between the Do song and Pieces Nice? 
psychological issues as part of the game. So you would deal like, you know, if you had an inferiority complex or some sort of trauma as a child, the idea of being able to actually jump into somebody's head to correct it was an amazing uh, thing. It's a very difficult game. It's a hard game, especially the meat circus game. But predominantly, um, I like work, working with Tim Schaefer, uh, who is just a brilliant guy. Um, and has always been very nice to me. After that game, he put me in almost every game that he did afterwards, so I'm really, really grateful to Tim Schaefer. Good question. Oh wait, you had one question for Ricky. What was your question for Ricky? Uh, well, for Ricky, I heard uh, that the reason uh, why uh, uh, Ger uh, uh, was always uh, ch uh, choking uh, on something whenever he drank something was because of uh, your uh, uh, throat uh, pro uh, problems uh, at, at making those squeaky sounds and then... Yes, I, I have asthma. Yes. <laughs> I was, and I have a terrible gag reflex. I was, I was just wondering how you felt about that becoming an actual part of the show. Oh, I think it's brilliant. Anytime the animators do stuff like that. In the movie, uh, I, I'm also bloaty. Look at bloaty! And uh, they had uh, me do something and I started uh, spasming and coughing. So the, uh, the storyboard artist had Bloody spit the pizza against the wall, and he just kept it in. Yeah, he would have an asthma attack, and it would really make all of us angry, because we had to yeah. wait for him to, wait. to come back. Yeah. He's furious. To be, yeah, to, yeah, to come back to consciousness. Yeah, such a nice, nice So Ricky, will you nice wake up already? Such a loving family environment. Hey, Ricky, can you please breathe? Yeah, there's Richard just giving me a tracheotomy. That's yeah. right, yeah. with a pen. Yeah. With a big pen. A straw in there. All right, let's go. Let's keep going. Hi, uh, everybody. It's fun yeah. times. See yeah. Nickelodeon. And then just one nostril. Like, I felt bad for the writer's assistant who had to clean up all the blood all the time. Yeah. I didn't. Oh. <laughs> Great stuff. I got tea afterwards. Yeah. Right, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Hello to both of you. First off, just gotta say, I'm the most starstruck by both of you out of there, all the guests here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and uh, my question for both of you is, um, I've heard a few like secondhand stories about how weird of a person Jonan Vasquez is, is to work with. So what is the weirdest quirk of his that you both uh, personally observed working Levitation. with him? <laughs> okay, I didn't hear that one. Summoning demons uh, out of his coffee mug. It's weird, but he only drinks tea. He does summon demons out of his coffee mug. That's but he only thing. drinks tea, so it's weird. Yeah. Doesn't like coffee <laughs> at all. Uh, doesn't like chocolate. Uh, I think that's Oh, yeah, my gosh, he loves candy. Yeah, he, he, but he, he hates loves chocolate. Candy. He hates chocolate. He likes fruity candy. Yeah, he likes fruity He's a weirdo. He hates fruity uh, candy. Obviously, always walk in chocolate in the is the best thing in the world. Uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> chocolate is nice. Chocolate is nice. Chocolate, 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 chocolate. <laughs> uh, yeah, so levitation, uh, nice. fear of chocolate, uh, demon summoning. <laughs> Great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, used to, he used to walk into the booth because he had these like 
Mondo boots that were like 17 yeah. and a half inches higher than he, off the ground. And he would walk in and he would just kick us in the stomach. Right. <laughs> and he did wear that suit made out of puppies that one time. Yeah. They were alive, it was fine, and they, they liked cute. it. They yeah. Cute. And they would fall over and they would carry him off. Yeah. <laughs> That's because the staples would come out. Well, <laughs> yeah. His staples. His staples. Yeah. Yeah. He was full of sutures all the time. All the time. Limbs falling off constantly. We'd have to staple them back together. That one time His dad built him in a lab. <laughs> he was like a tiny Frankenstein. A tiny Frankenstein? Tiny. He's like just big. You put him in your pocket. Yeah. You go to lunch. We're like, hey, okay. Remember we used to play Where the football game with him? You know, we yeah. Like that? Well, that sure. Been... Yeah, he only knew that he wanted which, which restaurant he wanted because he started kicking you in the chest. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the good old days. Pockets. Yeah. Woo, he's in U the UK right now, starving to death because he can't find anybody to uh, give him a room service. <laughs> he doesn't know how to do anything. That's because if they deliver, they don't come back. Well, they might step on. He's very tiny. They he's might. Tiny. They might, they might step he's on tiny. And crush him. Yeah. Yeah, he's tiny. He yeah. gets to that key. Card. Remember that time he rode a cockroach into work? Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> you really brought down memory lane. Wow. Yeah. Thank you for that great question. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> Word of the question. Yes. <laughs> In alphabetical order. <laughs> In pig Latin. Yes. <laughs> you know, once I have the answer to that, I'll give it to you. No, but, okay. Right. Let's do it. Um, Let's have it. So, what's your favorite? Why are you taking so long? <laughs> Ricky one day just goes, I know something. I do not do it like that. Yeah, he goes, I 
Yeah, you did not do something like that. I did not do it like that. I know something. There you go. <laughs> and I'm like, eh. He goes, I know something. I go, eh. I just got here with a... And I was like, you never seen this coming back. <laughs> and Ricky and I have been on the road for the last 16 years. <laughs> it's not, it's, that's, that's a true story. That we've been on the road promoting this show. We don't know what our homes look like. We don't, yeah, for the last 16 years, hoping that someday they'd stop us in a studio to record something. <laughs> and that's how we did Zim the movie. We're like Enter the floor. Every door open that. Like, hey, hello, I am Zim. This is my robot dog, Gur. I'm a person. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> Well, thank you for being part of our childhoods. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Your parents owe us babysitting money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I had a question. Five dollars more. Five dollars. Um, so you're both really just kind of out there and crazy in the show, and obviously <laughs> for this panel, just in real life, but. Have you always been this way, or has there been a kind of time where you were, you know, maybe not as crazy as you are now? Excuse me? Sometimes crazy. You speak idiot talk! <laughs> Shut your noise tube, Earth Pig! No, I've always been this way. <laughs> Ricky? I used to have a lot of hand puppets when I was little. <laughs> So many. <laughs> I don't know the question, actually. The question is, is why are you so crazy? <laughs> pew, 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 pew. He's playing Star Wars in his head right now. I guess I just have a secondary question. What That's was your the only way I can answer that question. Yeah, we've good? always been how we are. Yeah. I mean, this is part of our chemistry in the book. Right. Yeah, just, I just had like a whole pack of lifesavers. <laughs> whole thing. Not, right not the candies, those big ones on boats. Yeah. The ones he, he right eats off, those. Right off the Titanic. Right, he eats it. Yeah. It says SS Gurr. Yeah. They are sugary. I don't know okay. how to answer your question. I don't know why they're sugary. Not having this kid. Do you, know. yes. you have a follow up? Uh, Spur Ricky, what was your favorite hand puppet? Woo! Uh, <laughs> I had uh, an animal hand puppet that I really loved. Uh, but it was an like, actual animal. But his, his eyebrows <laughs> were great. His eyebrows would go up and down and something. Like, uh, 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 and my mom would shut the door. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Turns out it was just a paper towel. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for the questions. You. So, you guys are amazing, and your personalities are so strong. Please don't kill us. <laughs> <laughs> no, please kill me now. I, I can't make any promises. Um, so, your personalities come through in your characters so well, which is amazing. But how much creative control did you guys actually have in the direction of the characters? Well, Jonah, like, he knows what he wants to do, and then we screw it up, and then he likes that more. <laughs> Basically, and then we workshop that screw up, and then something that weird that he likes even more, and then and then that happens. So. so, did this lead to actually an evolution of the characters from the original writing of the script? Yeah, what do we do? The evolution yeah. of the characters from writing of the script does yeah. that lead to that this this thing that is this genius that is us? Yes. <laughs> the is that what you're saying? Yes, the genius. <laughs> We are completely the products of Nickelodeon, Nickelodeon trademark. <laughs> yeah, they brand your butt the second you get in there. What? They brand your butt? Yeah, it's gonna be... I don't know how to tell them, that didn't happen to any of us but him. Security, yeah. comes, security uh, comes in and they wear these big Spongebob helmets that hold you down. It's cute though, it's a cool picture of Spongebob. You know, a good show creator will understand uh, people's strengths. Uh, I'm, I'm an improviser, so uh, I've been lucky in the shows that I've done uh, that my, my people, that have, the creators of my show, understood that. And like on Billy and Mandy, Maxwell Adams is a perfect example of someone who let me go uh, yeah. forever. Yeah, 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 what do you mean to 
is being for the really cool I just, and so that's how that thing that kind of character evolved from Not me that was that I just I just kept rambling on and on and on until I said cut. Yeah. Um, so they were, were worn out. Yeah. They literally, they couldn't exactly. go any further. Like, yeah, yeah, that's they were lying on I the know, floor. Right. The yeah. We, um... <laughs> uh, where... I forgot what I was saying. But, um, like, I'll give you Ricky's example. the best person in the world. Oh, that's what I was saying. Ricky is the best person in the world. When we were doing, um... Uh, the Big Boogie Adventures on Billy and Mandy, perfect example. Um, there was a song that we sing where Billy sings, scary oh scary oh I'm scared but I'm baby no scary 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 oh well I'm not scared in my head to do it. Yes, I am kind of scared. And I was looking forward to it because the whole next day, um, it gets to this break in the song where there's this like 1980s hairband riff where Billy's like, I'm not scared! You know, and I like, could not wait to do it. And, um, it turns out that they hired someone to come in and sing that break, like an eight like, oh. yeah, right? So um, I was like really upset, so I pouted. And they said, what's wrong with you? And I said, well, I thought I was looking forward to that. I think Billy should sing that part. And Max said, okay, well, if we have time um, before lunch, we'll let you take a shot at it. I'm like, okay. So time kept going by and lunch came up and they broke for lunch. And I'm like, hey, but he goes, oh, fine. You can do a take. I'm like, okay. So we got to that part and it was like, it was like, I'm not scared, I'm not scared, I'm just really, really hungry, I want a sandwich. And, because it was lunchtime. And, um, and he loved it, and that ended up being the, the break in the song. So that's the game. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. When in doubt, how to doubt. That was just your <laughs> share invitation. That was one of them. Gypsies, tramps, and thieves. <laughs> Spawned in the wagon of a... Here if I could turn back ten, here if I could find a way. Thank you. That was actually Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hey guys, uh, it was uh, it was an absolute pleasure to meet you guys earlier today and actually sit down and talk with you for a little bit. But um, I completely rem forgot this question until like an hour ago. So I wanted to ask you this, Sir Mr. Horvitz. Um, you don't have to confirm nor deny this, but is Rasputin going B. to be... <laughs> is Rasputin going to be in Super Smash Brothers? Is what gonna happen who? Is Rasputin... <laughs> is Rasputin going to be in Super Smash Brothers? I don't know. You don't know? I haven't heard that. Interesting. I... Oh, because you know Tim sold the company, so that's an interesting thing. I don't know the answer to that one. I would neither I would neither confirm nor deny it. <laughs> I would just say I don't know. <laughs> I thought Rasputin was killed in the Russian Revolution. He was, but like, they had a very hard time <laughs> killing him. Oh, because they stabbed him, they drowned him, they right. shot him, but yeah. he would not die. Right, much like. You. Yes. <laughs> Don't try it, though. All right, thank you, guys. Thank, thank you for the question. All right, so when Urkins inevitably invade the Earth, where will be the best place to go and hide? Oh. McDonald's. <laughs> uh, that's actually true, yeah. 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 They like snacks, though. Yeah. So, uh, so stay away from 7-Eleven. There's no 7-Eleven. I'm pretty sure they would just annihilate the Earth. They would just like uh, show in the movie. They just they just blow away any planet in their path. And thinking. and the toilet. And the toilet. Yeah, hide the toilet. Yeah, sixteen years. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Good. Good survival question. That's probably one of my favorite moments. You've been hiding in a toilet for sixteen years. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. So the question I'd like to ask would be season Your shirt says Planet Booty. I just wanted to let you know that. <laughs> yes, it does. All right. Very good Go ahead. The, the question I'd like to ask is season three when, but I have a feeling I wouldn't get a straight answer. You bought so, that shirt, right? Yes, I did. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you know you've thrown down the gauntlet when you said, I know I won't get a straight answer. <laughs> I, probably, yeah. Uh, so how about... What? <laughs> How about, um, if you could voice any comic book character in an animated series, what would it be? For both of you. Booty Man. 
<laughs> I would do uh, Invader Zim from the Invader Zim comic book. <laughs> There are three butts on the shirt. There's one butt not enough? No, no, no. All right. Because it's a planet of booty. I'm trying to decide that I don't know. I've got one butt. Let me try one more butt. What's going to really make this really... Now it's planet oh, booty. No, three butts. <laughs> Land here. <laughs> All right, well, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks for the question. Hey guys, thank you both for just being such an outlet and a creative expression for all You're of us that, have, that deal with impulsivity and ADHD. Your show has always been such an inspiring thing for me. Um, in the beginning of the show, we see, um, you know, uh, Zim get his so unit, but it's kind of busted up. They crack open its head and throw some garbage in it, and that seems to contribute to its personality. If you guys were so units, what would the tallest have thrown in your heads that had this outcome? <laughs> Beef jerky. <laughs> sadness. Oh. Oof. Liquid sadness. <laughs> Is it supposed to be stupid? Is it supposed to be sad? Is it supposed to be depressed? <laughs> it's not depressed. It's advanced. <laughs> Exactly like Marvin the Paranoid Android from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yeah. Awesome. I would put in Catcher in the Rye. See, I read too. <laughs> <laughs> I would put in um, Apocalypse uh, Now. Apocalypse Now. <laughs> and Beef Jerk. I own an assassin. <laughs> You're not even that. You're a grocery boy. Come to collect on the bill. <laughs> Great question. Hi. Oh, what? Actually, it was more for you. What was your one of your favorite moments from Andrew Beavers? Uh, I always like the muscular beaver episodes. <laughs> muscular beaver, whoosh! Da 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 da! Careful, citizen, or you'll cut yourself on my razor sharp fur of steel! That's one of my favorite. I loved all the muscular beaver episodes. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't know. It was definitely one of my favorites. Yay! Especially you got good taste, my friend. Yeah, especially considering I was like 10 and my brother was like 6, so I called him a spook head for like a month. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, as a, a thinly veiled insult, <laughs> spoot head. And then what was the, like, like, the funniest line that you could not stop laughing with Gurr? With Gurr? Uh, I guess it was this one. Hey Gurr, it's me, Zim. Hello. <laughs> I still can't get <laughs> <laughs> I am here now. <laughs> there's, there's a famous, there's a famous story. There's a famous story that we've made famous. Um, Is it? Yeah, it was that I one day I got on this jag about the fact that Yoda is supposed to be this all-seeing master of the Force, but anytime like there was any really important question that he had to answer, the answer was always, "Hmm, clarity." Master Yoda, where do I leave my car keys? Cloudy! Uh, Master Yoda, do you want to go in? Cloudy! Cloudy! You want a pizza? Cloudy! <laughs> so we did that all through the session. Because it's like, uh, who's the, uh, the uh, emperor, the evil emperor that's sitting right next to you? Cloudy! <laughs> and we just never knew, right? And we, we did this through the entire session, and Yoda got so Oh, mad at us because he wouldn't stop. Well, he did it in the car all the time. Yeah, because I went to lunch afterwards yeah. and we're driving and I was in the back seat just going, Lardy. <laughs> Lardy. And he would stop and I was like, stop! I will turn this car around. <laughs> and then he kicked me in the stomach. <laughs> While driving. But he was tiny. He was tiny, so he, yeah, he climbed up the, the little ignition switch. <laughs> Thank you for your questions. Thank you so much.
So my question first was from a friend, for Ricky. Oh. What is Gur's favorite food, and what breed of dog is he? <laughs> oh, well, um, I don't think he's, like, I don't, I don't, Gur doesn't really have, like, a favorite food, he just eats whatever's put in front of him. He just eats food. Uh, like, he seeks out things that suddenly, you know, that he gains attention for them, but, you know, he would, uh, if you've seen the movie, uh, he would eat a taco as much as he would eat a baby. Uh, he, he did. Just, he did. He did. Uh, you know, so whatever just is there at that moment, that's that's what he's gonna eat. Um, but what was the other question? What kind of dog? I had a... Oh, he's green. <laughs> a pantomime dog. So I had a question for Richard, but I forgot it. Wait. I know how that so goes. So can we just can we just get a loud, bold I am Zim? <clears throat> I am Zim. I am Zim. Me I, and Zim. I am Zim. I am FBI. I am, what is the human line? I am government man. I am government, government man. man. Come from the government. The government has said. You did that, didn't you? That's Which a government thing. I did that. You did that. Yeah, it's Gurr. Oh. Gurr's in the government man. So oh, yeah, that's I did right. it. Yeah. I did it. I forgot. Yeah. 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 that good. No one knows. Hi, robot person. Hello. Um, wow. So, being a robot, I'm always what? other robots. What are your guys' favorite robots besides Gurr? I like Vincent from the Black Hole, Walt Disney, 1978. Uh, I like R2-D2. Uh, he's pretty cool. I like the R5-D4 unit. Uh, I like Maximilian, also from uh, the Black Hole. Uh, I like for the original Robbie the Robot. He was pretty neat. Um, Forbidden Planet is a great movie. Uh, I like the little weird Fantastic Four cartoon robot that was in the Fantastic Four TV series back in around 1984. I like uh, a lot of mecha. I like Giant Robo from the movie Giant Robo, uh, the OVA series, and I like, uh, uh, well, they're not really like a robot, they're like a mecha of uh, Dunbine from the Dunbine series, uh, but there's also, uh, you know, um, Gigantor, which is really Tetsujin 28, and there was, um, um, there was uh, the, all of them. The, uh, the, the they're called Veritex and Robotech, but it's really Macross, and they're uh, they're Valkyries and Macross, uh, but they're not really robots per se. They're just mecha uh, that have robotic uh, servos. Uh, but I also like uh, oh boy. Keanu Reeves. <laughs> That's great. Thank you, robot. You know, I don't like I don't like Rosie the robot. From uh, Jetsons. I don't like her at all. She's got an attitude. <laughs> You're a robust misogynist. Robotisogynist. You're a robotisogynist. You're a robotisogynist. Copyright. <laughs> Trademark. Uh, hi there. Um, Andrew Beavers and Billy and Mandy Zim. It's no uh, no secret that they got undertones of adult humor to them. And you touched a little bit on your uh, improv -ing. Did you ever come up with any lines in the booth where you were surprised they put it on air? <laughs> no. <laughs> or maybe something that they said, okay, but no, let's not do that one. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mostly every Invader Zim were surprised made it to the air. But, um, I mean, I had, a, I had an office because I was also a background painter in the original show, and every time I got a script, I would pack up my desk. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, nothing that I can really think of, no. We, I mean, we, you know, we still had the producers and the network in the booth with us as we were recording, and they would go, ah, ah, ah. No, no, no. You had the squirt no. bottle? Yes. Yes. No. They shake a can at Ricky. Yeah. I didn't like that. Yeah. No. <laughs> Who likes no, that, Ricky. right? Especially right. when they take that snake can, they open it, and the snake pops out. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah. That always was, got me every time. Except it was a cobra. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> that one, I remember that one. Though. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for the question. Yes. Look, it's Deb, your nemesis. Zim. Hideous monster. <laughs> Ugly pig smelly. I'm getting out of the way of this. Dib. Dib. <laughs> Nothing 
nothing's more disgusting than that. <laughs> well, now you've just hurt my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> You get your head squished. <laughs> it's all over my head. It's oh, genius. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> like a booger. Oh. Yes, Dib, what is your question? I just wanted to say, coming from Dib, um, Invader Zim was like an anchor uh, growing up through a really tough time, and it it just helped me like improve so much as a person. Co weird from coming from this cartoon, yeah. You're from not the first person that yeah. said that. That's true yeah. for a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> Even with all the screams? <laughs> Especially because of all the screams. No, it was like, it, it, like scream yeah, therapy. This, this, yeah, it was scream therapy. I yeah. screamed along with the episode. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, but um, I just really wanted to thank you guys for that. And um, yeah. <laughs> all right, I take it back. Here's your head back. <laughs> I was wondering if Zim and Dib had any words of wisdom for people going through a hard time. Um, yes, so Dib would go, nyeh, 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 don't be depressed! <laughs> and Zim would be like, eh, 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 I will allow you to be my bestest friend. <laughs> Is this official? No! <laughs> Dear Mr. Horvitz, I met you in Minneapolis. You said that I could be your best friend. Where do you live? And what is your social security number? You said... Oh, I can tell them that. Yeah. Let me get my notebook out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Uh, and just so we know, we've got about 10 minutes left. Hi there. Hi. Um, I was just going to say, I grew up as a kid and I watched Invader Zan, and then eventually it disappeared, like on the network. And then suddenly I'm in like my local town, at the mall, I go to a Hot Topic and I see there's so many Gur merchandise. Gur, Gur, Gur! America loves Gur! So, <laughs> Thank you! My question. Sim you know is more rare. Yeah. What America don't love is giving Gur any royalties, though. <laughs> so, so, you buy them products. No, 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 me. So, my question was what were you guys' reactions to just going to like a mall and just seeing a bunch of Sim merchandise? I don't go to the mall. <laughs> I live in a mall, so it's not that big. He has no choice. Yeah. I live in Sephora. Because <laughs> it smelled good. Uh, there were times where uh, we, uh, we did appearances at a Hot Topic in the early years. You did? Uh, yeah, no, I, no, no, we didn't. I didn't. No, you, you didn't. Um, <laughs> no, but it was like you couldn't find any Zim anywhere, so I'd stop. I boycotted all malls after that. I'm sure. You get, we were like making your own uh, paper mache dips and putting them in the hot topics, you know, so that people would buy something. Why well, do? No, I'm not Zim. Yeah. Oh, it's, oh you, you just said Zim. I'm Zim. You're Zim? Yeah. yeah. What? Yeah. Wow. I am all Zim. These years. Remember that I am Zim? Yeah. <laughs> I am Zim. You think I was just saying that? No, I'm fine. thought you were kidding. No. I thought you were Dib all this time. It is I Zim! Oh, jeez. Yeah. Wow. Am yeah. I embarrassed? Blockbuster revelations of Minneapolis GalaxyCon. Yeah. It's just killed me. Thank you for the therapy Thanks. session, everyone. <laughs> anyway, read your checking account numbers. Oh. <laughs> you so silly. Who uses checks anymore? <laughs> I have another question, if that's all right. No! Okay. All right, you may ask. <laughs> um, if you guys could write your own episodes, what would they be about? Uh, I, was, I was writing an episode when the show got canceled. Uh, me and uh, uh, my friend, uh, my friend and I, uh, Eric Kuhar, we, we were writing an episode called Squishy Hugger of Worlds. Uh, and it was about how there was a big uh, alien named Squishy, he's the size of a planet, and what he likes to do is he flies from planet to planet and hugs them until they explode. Uh, he was on his way to Earth to hug the Earth. And so uh, Dib found out he was going to go out there and stop him from destroying the Earth. And Zim found out so he was going to go out there and stop him from destroying his Earth before he could destroy it. 
uh, and uh, they was, he was being followed. Uh, when they go out there, they find out he's being followed by an alien fleet of all the, uh, the planets that he's already hugged and squished to death. And they were going to blow up the Earth before he could hug it just to make him feel bad. So, uh, that's what I was working on. And then they, uh, uh, we, we got, the first, got the first couple lines done, and then they called us out to cancel the show. So, hooray! Thanks for the question. Hello. 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 <laughs> What's your least favorite line? What's that? What's your least favorite line? Least favorite line. This one. <laughs> My all. least favorite line is, hey, what's going on? <laughs> Hate that line. <laughs> I remember you broke out in a rash when you said it. I did. Oh, yeah. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for the great question. <clears throat> stories. I mean, Joan had set out with Enter the Florpus to, as he said it, create everything was too much. It was too much volume, too much character, too much music, too much light, too much color. And he, he, he succeeded, he and that's yeah. what he wanted. Um, but, you know, if you look at the series, there was time to develop stories like, you know, um, Zim Eats Waffles, which is one of my favorite episodes. Um, so I'd like to see a series before another movie, but we have no say in it. But we can help. Yes, we can help. You can get on social media, Minneapolis. Watch Just clap really Just loudly. Keep your hands clapping. Yeah. Quick, louder. Yeah. Not good enough, Sim is dead. <laughs> Look what you did. Look what you did to Sim. Thank you for the great question. Great question. You're Why are you so, so cute? cute. <laughs> so this is mainly for Mr. Horvitz, but um... Why am I so cute? <laughs> well, <laughs> jeans. Um, uh, with Invader Zim and now Psychonauts uh, both coming back yes. after a seemingly long hiatus, um, what is it like to get that phone call or get that news that you, being at the core of it, are coming it's back? It's like this. It. <laughs> uh, hello, debt collectors. Uh, I'll be paying things soon. <laughs> um, just don't answer the phone like me. Oh, yes. <laughs> Someone posted online recently that I was sing single-handedly bringing back the 1990s and 2000s. Um, but I love it because uh, a lot of, the, it's not my choice, but a lot of the things I've ever done have always been called cult favorites, cult classics. So to me, I'm proud of that because, you know, while I would like to have millions and millions of dollars, <laughs> <laughs> That's all, I'd like to have millions and millions of dollars. Um, I'm proud of that. I did a movie in the 80s before most were born in this room called Summer School. And uh, thank you. And uh, that movie was, you know, came out with all the other 80, 80s movies at the time, you know, all, all the, uh, the John Hughes films and all these films. So it kind of also got um, buried amongst a lot of the commercially successful things. So I'm pretty proud that those things that I always felt like we were always kind of ahead, like we were just ahead of our time on most of the things I was in because uh, we just were, and then it took time. 
Because if you look at any of the, the shows that came after Zim, they owe a lot to Zim. Rick and Morty, um, uh, uh, not in, well, Adventure Time, but also um, Steven Universe owes a ton of debt to Invader yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, they owe us money. Yes. <laughs> and jobs. But that's a good question. Thank you. Thank you. I'm ecstatic. And I'm feeling very grateful. Thanks, and why are you so cute? <laughs> oh. Hello. Hello. How's it going today? Good. All right. So, I am. You buy any cookies for me? No. no. All right. All right. Get out. I don't like cookies. <laughs> I know. Shocking. Sorry, They're in your joking. computer. So <laughs> basically, I know. Z I know. Invader Zim is a really old show, but what? I know it is. <laughs> How dare you! <laughs> but I really. You were like, what, 30 when it came out? <laughs> so, I really, really love the show and thank you for making it. I haven't start. I just saw the movie like a couple weeks ago and I just. And I hated it! <laughs> I know why it's old now! <laughs> and I just watched. Like a bunch of the episodes of the show, I really love it. But like, what was your like most inspiration from Invader Zim? Uh, money. <laughs> that was like, my they were like, what inspired us to make it, or like we what we made it, and we we're like, I feel inspired now. Like, what inspired you to make it? Money. <laughs> um, just you know, for the company, I was at home, wanted to get out. I'm like, oh, there's some actors over there in the booth. Hi guys, how's it going? They're like, yeah, come in. Yeah. Anybody got sandwiches in here? Watch out, Ricky, don't get kicked in the stomach by Jonan. <laughs> that inspired me. Um, you know, it was a great show. It was fun. I, you know, when we when we set out to make that that show, we didn't know what it was going to be, but we were all kind of at like our, you know, there's just a chemistry between the writing and Jonan's vision and the actors. We all gelled and you just, you can't like bottle that kind of chemistry. And we were all at the top of our game, so it was inspiring to us to go in there every day. It was fun. But you know, we're in a dark room, you know, making each other laugh. We have no idea if it's going to reach a wider audience, which we're fortunate it has. I was mostly confused. <laughs> Because Jonan, uh, before he made Invader Zim, he made a comic book called John and the Homicidal Maniac about, him, about uh, a murderer. And uh, I knew him, uh, I met him in 1995 when he was 19, before he made the comic. And uh, so when he told me he was pitching a show to Nickelodeon, I said, what? <laughs> Do they know what you make? And it turned out they didn't. <laughs> True story. <laughs> Hi, Thank you for question. the question. Thank you for your good question. We are in our last five minutes. We'll try and lightning round these yeah, last Yeah, everybody speak really fast. We're trying to interrupt you. minus five seconds. If you have two questions, start with the second one. Can't talk like that. Um, the question I have is mostly for Ricky. Um, okay, hi. Do you, remember, do you remember the plan for Gerd to turn into a giant pizza? And if you do, please tell the story as quickly as you can, because we don't have much time. Ask Gerd, please. <laughs> What? Wow, ask her. Wait, do you have a script for him? Wait, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we did not pay him enough for a full script reading Tell right now. Tell the story of your idea for the giant pizza. That's how you became a... Oh! Yeah, that's you, that's you gotta order a million pizzas, and I'm gonna roll around in them pizzas, and that's the story of how I become a giant pizza. No, Ger! <laughs> that will never happen! Burnett, that will never happen, Ger! <laughs> that's my favorite one. My favorite reaction. Yeah. Good question. I know my favorite reaction is when you when you go sliding off and he goes, "You're horrible, girl." <laughs> yeah, they cut out a line uh, when he he rides yeah. the the donkey and he slides off. He goes, "Sorry," and they cut that out because uh, it, it was too loud in that part. Right, because yeah. you can't be loud. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the thing we don't want is loud. Yeah. He also cut out the part where Gurr says, I dreamed there was a macaroon. Yeah. Uh, I don't know where it was supposed to be in there, but uh, that's gone. But I love that reaction that uh, Dib, or the Zim, who's Dib today, uh, that Zim has when Gurr says the pizza plan, because it's so, he's so angry. Yeah, yes. That'll never happen, Gurr! <laughs> Dib. I don't pay for a subscription! Oh, look, he's a tiny Pikachu! Pikachu! Pikachu will electrocute you if you're Pokemon. not Pokemon! Are you all charged up? Do you like to electrocute everybody around you? 
Oh wait, where's my phone? I'm gonna catch a Pokemon. I'm gonna catch it. Ah. What's your question? What's your question, Pikachu? Um, this is the question for both of you. What's your favorite creation that you made? Favorite creation that we made? Um, girl or mini moose. Oh. Oh, me? Oh. Oh, Daddy, without a don't doubt, you. mini moose. Oh. Oh. <laughs> He's my most evil creation ever. Mini moose. When you get it, when you grow up, watch a movie called Sophie's Choice, and you'll find out that that's the, <laughs> that's the saddest question to ask. That's right. But that's a good question. I think, Thank girl, you so much. my mother used to say, my mother used to say, if I, because I had six, five brothers and sisters, my mother would say, if I was in that movie Sophie's Choice and I had to decide, I would just say, kill them all. <laughs> Oh, that was like really great. She thought that was like loving. I couldn't decide. I would just say kill them all. Eagle Hey, uh, hello. If you were like gonna make another show about, uh, if you're going to make uh, another series of Invader Zim, could you do it uh, if it had like a bigger focus around the other invaders? Uh, no. We would not do that. Cause, no, because no. we we would kill them. Yes. So that we could be maybe, stars again. Maybe Scooge. Maybe yeah. Scooge. You know. Yeah. Maybe we we decided to actively sabotage any show or movie that, that Jonah tries to create that isn't us. Yes. <laughs> yes. Also, uh, are you ever going to bring back Invader Tack? She was actually it had a bigger part in the movie yeah. actually, but they we for time they had to edit out a whole thing. With her. Tack is, yeah. is actually in the space prison. Yeah. And that's why uh, her spaceship gets so excited to go back to the space prison right. to break her out. That's but that, what, that was that's in the script. what her spaceship was doing, was breaking out Tack. Yeah. All right. Thank, Thank you for those questions. We, we are at time. We'll try and get this question in real quick. All right. How do you relieve the uh, vocal strain when you do your character voices? How do I do what? Relieve the, the strain The vocal strain, I, I drink a lot of this. Like, when we used to record, we'd have a four hour session. I would go through six bottles of these <laughs> per four hour session. And then I would pee for three days. <laughs> and that's right. how I relieved. Thank you. I, thank you everyone. So Thank you so much.